welcome students today we will learn about deriving a formula for a curved surface in the previous classes we have seen about refraction now here also we will use the refraction phenomena and we will derive the formula for curved surfaces before going into the topic please do subscribe for the channel now we will see how the image is formed in the refraction so already we have seen in the last classes about refraction when a ray is traveling from rarer medium to denser medium the refracted ray bends towards the normal and when a ray travels from denser medium to rarer medium the ray bends away from the normal and we have also seen the cases when the ray is traveling along the principal axis and parallel to the principal axis here we will consider this case okay so here i am taking a surface which is separating the two media that is this is one medium and this is another medium is it clear so consider this as a rarer medium and this as a denser medium so each medium will have their own refractive indices so let their refractive indices be n1 and n2 so medium has n1 refractive index and other medium has n2 as refractive index is it clear now this is the curved surface and this is the point pole okay i am considering a principal axis is it clear now i am placing a point object that means i am placing a point object at o is it clear now so the rays which are coming from o see first ray will be here it is so it is a point object so first ray will be traveling along the principal axis so when a ray is traveling along the principal axis what happens the refracted ray gets undeviated that means it travels in the same path is it clear now we will take another ray that is making certain angle with the principal axis now here i am taking a ray from point object o and it is incidenting at point a let this be a is it clear and this is making this incident ray is making certain angle with the principal axis so let this angle be alpha so alpha is the angle made between the incident ray and the principal axis now at this point see now i need to know it bends towards the normal or away from the normal at this point i will draw a normal at this point i will draw a normal so this is the normal is it clear now as we have considered this as a rarer medium and this as a denser medium what happens the refracted ray bends towards the normal is it clear so it travels in this direction and it meets the principal axis at some point so let this point be i the ray which is making certain angle with angle alpha with the principal axis is incident at a surface a is it clear now the ray bends towards the normal and it meets the principal axis at point i now the angle made with this refracted ray and the principal axis is nothing but considered as gamma is it clear and the this is the normal so this normal is meeting the principal axis at this point so where the normal meets is nothing but the center is it clear so now this angle is nothing but considered as beta is it clear now the angle made by the incident ray at this point with the normal is nothing but called as angle of incidence and the ray refracted ray which is making angle with the normal is nothing but called as refracted angle of refraction that is the angle between the normal and the incident ray is nothing but called as incidence angle and the angle between the refracted ray and the normal is nothing but called as angle of refraction so these are the terms related to refraction is it clear now here consider what is the angle alpha alpha is the angle between principal axis and incident ray 
angle beta is between normal and principal axis. That means where the normal is meeting the principal axis. And gamma is principal axis and refractive. That means alpha is the angle between the principal axis and the incident ray. Beta is the angle between the normal at that point with the principal axis. And gamma is the angle between the refracted ray and the principal axis. Now we have considered two rays. The ray along the principal axis and the ray making certain angle. So the both the refracted rays are meeting at this point. So this point is the image of point object. So let this be I. So from this figure I can say that the distance between pole and the object that is nothing but called as object distance U. And the distance between the pole and image is nothing but called as object distance that is denoted as V. And the distance between the pole and center is nothing but called as radius of curvature. So the distance between pole and center of curvature is represented by R. Now from this figure C in triangle ACO that is in triangle ACO that means in this triangle from this triangle I can write See here I am considering angle of incidence as theta 1 and angle of refraction as theta 2 for easy understanding. So now here in triangle ACO. So theta 1 is nothing but equal to alpha plus beta. So according to max. Is it clear? So ex external angle is nothing but is equal to sum of interior angle. So here theta 1 is is nothing but equal to alpha plus beta. And from the A, C, I. So exterior angle is beta. So beta equal to theta 2 plus gamma. So beta 2 equal to theta 2 plus gamma. So from this I can write. If I bring this gamma this side. Okay. Then it will be beta minus gamma. And this will be equal to theta 2. And for refraction we follow Snell's law. So, what is Snell's law? N1 sin theta1 equal to N2 sin theta2. So, now by substituting the values of theta1 and theta2 in this equation. So, what it becomes? N1 is same N1 because we are considering the two mediums refractive index as N1 and N2. So, N1 sin. So, what is theta1 value? Alpha plus beta. So, that we have written here alpha plus beta equal to n2 sin what is theta 2 value beta minus gamma so sin beta minus gamma now here we will be considering suppose if these rays okay the rays which are as this is a point object so point object means the rays will be very near to it is it clear so the rays which are getting incident on this point object will be refracting that means will be incidenting on the principal axis nearly. That means the rays will move very near to the principal axis. So and they will travel parallel to the principal axis. So the rays which are traveling very close to the principal axis are nothing but called as paraxial rays. And when the rays are traveling very near to the principal axis, these angles alpha, beta, gamma will be very small. Is it clear? So that's why we will assume that here the parallel rays are moving. That approximation is nothing but called as paraxial approximation. By this approximation, we will get sin alpha plus beta equal to alpha plus beta. Because these are very small angles. And sin beta minus gamma equal to beta minus gamma. Now I am substituting these two values in this equation. N1 sin alpha plus beta equal to N2 sin beta minus gamma. So I am substituting in place of sin alpha plus beta. I am just substituting the alpha plus beta. Why I am substituting this? Because I have assumed the paraxial approximation. So here 
this will change into n1 alpha plus beta equal to n2 beta minus gamma. Now I am multiplying this. So what it becomes? n1 into alpha plus n1 into beta equal to n2 into beta minus n2 into alpha. So from this equation we got n1 alpha plus n1 beta equal to n2 beta minus n2 alpha. Now I need to find the values of alpha, beta and gamma. Is it clear? So for finding these alpha, beta values we will consider here. So now I am drawing a as these are paraxial rays we are considering. So this pole will interface with that means it will coincide with the normal at this point. Okay. Now I am considering for finding the alpha. So this is a right angle triangle. I am considering the triangle A O L. So for this as it is a right angle triangle tan alpha equal to. So already in maths you know tan is nothing but represented as opposite side by adjacent side. So at this point alpha is there. So alpha. So alpha opposite side is A N. Okay. So A N by adjacent side is N O. N O. So this will be nothing but equal to alpha because it is a small angle. And for tan beta. So here it is tan beta. So for tan beta I am considering the triangle A N C. So this is a right angle triangle. Here, see here it is beta angle. So beta equal to opposite side A N by adjacent side N C. This will be equal to beta. And for gamma. So gamma is here. So now I am considering the A, I and N. That means A, I and N. Is it clear? So now here it will be opposite side is A, N by adjacent side is N, I. That will be equal to gamma. So from this equation I got alpha, beta and gamma values. Now I am going to substitute these values in this equation. So in place of alpha I am substituting the values of a n by n o and in place of beta I am substituting a n by n c and next in place of gamma I am substituting a n by n r. See as I am considering here para paraxial rays. Is it clear? So when paraxial rays are considered what I have said this point n which is here. So this will coincide with pole. Okay. So then all these values a n, n o, n c, n i these all will be equal to p. That means we will replace n with p. Okay. So this p, this n will coincide with the p. So I can replace the values n i, n o, n c with p i, p o and p c. So why it will coincide means because we are considering the paraxial approximation. So from this equation I will replace Ni, NO and NC with PI, PO and PC. Then this equation will change as Ni by PO plus N1 by PC equal to N2 by PC minus N2 by PI. See in this PC, PC. These both are the same denominator. So I will bring these two terms one side and these two terms one side. So what happens here it is N1 by PO plus this is this N2 by PI I am bringing this side. So here it is minus so it becomes plus. So plus N2 by PI equal to this is N2 by PC I am bringing this PC that side. So here it is plus sign. So it, it, when it comes this side it becomes minus. So minus N1 by PC. So already in the starting we have said that PO is nothing but the PO is nothing but the distance between object and the pole. So that is nothing but called as a object distance. And PI, P and I. So the distance between the PI that means pole and image is nothing but called as image distance. And it is denoted by V. And the distance between P and C that is pole and center is nothing but radius of curvature R. Is it clear? So now I am replacing these PI, PO and PC values. So then the equation will change into NI by U plus N2 by V equal to N2 by R minus N1 by R. 
So you have both are same. So I can write it as n1 by u plus n2 by v equal to n2 minus n1 by r. So this is the relation giving between the two refractive indices. That means refractive indices of two mediums, object distance, image distance as well as radius of curvature. See here this is the relation for the considered case. So if I want to generalize this equation for all the cases, I need to consider the sign conventions. So already we have seen for reflection, what are the sign conventions? So same sign conventions are applicable here. So what are the sign conventions? First one is all distances should be measured from the pole. That is the first one. And second one is all distances should be measured in the direction of incident ray. Should be taken as positive. And all the rays which are measured opposite to the incident ray direction are taken as negative. And all the heights above the principal axis are taken positive. And all the heights taken below the principal axis are taken as negative. So these are the sign conventions. Now if I consider sign conventions over here. See this PO. So PO. So incident ray is in this direction. So it is going in this direction. But I am measuring the object distance from pole to object. That means I am measuring in a direction opposite to the incident ray direction. So this will become minus U. And next PI that is the distance between pole and image. So incident ray is in this direction as well as I am measuring the distance from pole. So it, this is also in the same direction. So it will be positive and R is also in the same direction. So it will be also plus. So if I apply this in this equation then it becomes minus u. Okay. So how can I simplify this equation now? So this is minus n1 by u plus n2 by v equal to n2 minus n1 by r. So I can simplify this as n2 by v minus n1 by u equal to n2 minus n1 by r. So this is the generalized relation between the object distance, image distance, radius of curvature and refractive indices of two mediums. This is how we derive the relation for a curved surface. This is the relation we got for a curved surfaces. So I can generalize this equation for a plane surface also. How see? For a plane surface, radius of curvature will be at infinite. That means 1 by r will be equal to 0. Why? Because for a plane surface, we don't have any radius of curvature. That means it will be at finite, infinite distance. So 1 by r will be represented by 0. So now if I substitute that in equation, so what it becomes? This will become n1 minus n1, 1 by r as 0. So into 0. So now it will be n2 by v minus n1 by u equal to this is whole into 0 is nothing but 0. So from this equation I can get n2 by v equal to n1 by u. So this is the relation for the plane surfaces. So this is the relation for plane surfaces refraction, object distance, image distance and refractive indices.